Yeah, getting some guys back. We'll see where they go. You know, I mean, Kyle's in a return to play and got an exemption for Nick, and we'll start working Peter back in there and kind of see how everybody goes throughout the week. We look at the design runs that the Colts used for Richardson and his fourth rushing touchdown. What is it to you that, that stands out so much? Well, I mean, the same thing that everybody else sees. I mean, he's big, he's fast, uh, you know, he's willing. You know, and he knows where the goal line is. He knows where to – the first down, what he needs to get to, um, you know, so it'll be a huge uh, challenge, not only out in the field for those plays that they designed, but also, you know, the kind of the closer you get to the to the goal line. When you, when you have a guy like that that's so capable of running, how much does that affect the, the defense as far as the red zone? Because they're pretty, pretty good at that. Well, I mean, it just makes you to defend everybody, you know. If it's a run action, you have to – a running back, somebody's got responsibility for the quarterback, somebody's got a responsibility for for the two receivers, the relief, you know, throws that they can make off of it. It's what you have to defend. Is it a good thing after, you know, Richardson's already played three or four games, I, I think he missed one, but good thing to see him now that there's a little bit of film out of him on him since you've never played against a, him before? Well, I mean, it's always good to see, uh, you know, have some tape. I'm sure they'll have some some new designs and some things off of some different plays. It's kind of what they do, you know, being able to build and design off off stuff that they do. Um, you know, certainly been able to to, to score uh, and take advantage of the turnovers that they've had and been really good in the red zone. I guess with Nick and Peter, are they kind of in the same boat as far as trying to build their conditioning and stamina and all that back? And is that something you will monitor them through the week on? Um, no, I mean, Nick's been able to probably work um, a little bit more than, than Peter has. So I mean, we'll see where, where they both are. But, <clears throat> you know. Nick, Nick's been able to, to kind of work through, even though he hasn't been here. Uh, Peter had a little bit of a break. You feel like you guys made a, a step with the tight end blocking last week, and, and can you advance it from there and now with Kevin in the mix as well? Um, you know, everybody will have to block really well against the Colts. They have a you know, good bunch of good edge defenders that they play. Uh, they roll through um, really good in the middle. So everybody will have to block well. Is it tougher to prepare for the possibility of Jonathan Taylor not having seen him in that specific offense yet, or is he somebody who you kind of know what you're going to get if he plays? Um, I would say that most of the, the, the runs that Jonathan Taylor will have, um, you know, for the most part, I don't think you're going to change, you know, the, the quarterback's role, right? So we've seen him run outside zone, seen him run inside zone, seen him run – you know, gap scheme, seeing him run inside zone from the gun, outside zone, like he's good, he's fast, he's, he's tough to tackle. So whatever the quarterback does after that, if he pulls it, you know, that's on somebody else. But you know, it's a good, very good player, excellent player. So we've seen all those runs that he probably would be doing. And, and with Moss, I mean, does that add another piece to that puzzle? Runs hard. You know, he runs really hard and um, – you know, it's been been a good addition for him. He's you know, strong runner. As you look to defend Richardson, is discipline the most important thing that happened? Well, I think discipline, communication, understanding the call, and changing things up on him. You know, based on zone or man, and making sure that um, you know sometimes it's not designed either. It's third down or first or second pat drop back, and you know there's uh, not rush discipline, and he's able to. To, to pull it down and gain yards and, and make first downs. How do you describe this opportunity at Indy with the division red like this? Well, I think it's, you know, it's a great opportunity to, to go on the road. You know, I think for all of us uh, that, that are trying to, um, you know, just improve and, and do, you know, ultimately win, win our division, you know, you're going to have to win a couple of these on the road. And so I do think it's a great opportunity. You know, everybody's bunched up in there. It's it's early, but great opportunity. How much is a how much of a challenge does Zaire uh, Franklin pose? A guy who's really seemed to ascend the last couple of years or so. But what does he present for, for the offense in terms of just dealing with him, knowing where he is? Yeah, he better block him. He plays with speed and violence. He's a, a very very good player. Um, 
you know, he gets to the ball in a hurry, he gets there and wants to play with, with some violence and, and a lot of respect for him as a player. Um, you know, him and Shaq and, and, and EJ, you know, a lot of speed, a lot of athleticism, their ability to, to try to get the football out. So, you know, we'll, we'll have to uh, make sure that, that we block those guys. You guys have had such success in the division the last couple of years. You know, obviously that's huge to, to get to the playoffs. What, what's, what do you think has been the consistency in, in the division? Just trying to play well, trying to do things that help us take care of the football, you know, control, you know, be good in the red zone. Um, get some stops, play complimentary football, not do things that that hurt us in, in, in you know, close games, which most of these divisional games are. Those are all your mantras. You think you've been better at those against these teams with consistency than you have maybe? I mean, whatever the record says, I don't know. I know that we're 2-2 we're two and two this year and haven't played a division game. Coach, we're still returning. Um, you put him back there not returning, and then what are your expectations just offensively for him? I guess consistency, maybe one? Well, just seeing where he is physically, making sure, you know, that the that the route running and the conditioning and, you know, have, a, have an opportunity to catch punts throughout the week and, you know, we'll see where that is at the end of the week and excited to have him back out there on the practice field. How much of a bruise can he be in the punter tournament? Well, we had 21-yarder last week, so hopefully if he can – do better than that. We block better. You know, I don't think that that's been, you know, awful by any means. Who's ever been back there? You know, we want to try to create some explosive plays in, in that phase. If if we can get the the gunners held up and and give guys some space and do it all without um, penalties, I think that would be great. What's made Danico Autry? Even 10 years in the league, still such a productive guy on the, on the defensive line. I think he's always been a productive, instinctive player going back to even when he was coming out. He um, was a player that I remember looking at and, and seeing. And you know, He's got a lot of pride in what he does uh, and how he prepares and, and how he plays. Um, and he's been an instinctive player when we played against him in, uh, in Indy and then since he's been here. Well, I mean, I think that there's a lot of familiarity between us and the Colts and um, their style of play. A lot of respect for them and what they do. Um, you know, so you have to play well in the division. And you have to you have to win those games. Those are critical if you if you ultimately want to want to win and be in the playoffs and host playoff games. So. We understand the importance of it and, and how critical it is at this, this early in the season going on the road. When you look at their tight ends like Alec Cobb, Branson, the way they use them, how much of a challenge does that present? Well, they, they're, they've got, um, you know, basketball style, you know, frames. They're, they're athletic, good catch radius. Um, I, I would say that their quarterbacks have been finding them sometimes and even the other day uh, for a huge play, you know, kind of extended the play. and. And was able to find you know, um, Mo, and, and he's always you know played well. I think against us, and he's been able to go up and get the football. And um, I think for the quarterback, they're they're really good targets. Who's who's not practicing? Uh, well, Burks won't be out there. I don't think Tart will be out there. I don't think Gifford will be out there. Yeah, no question. I mean, the more healthy guys we can have battling to, to get on the field and, and competing to make our team better is going to be a good thing. Ian Phillips, another one of those guys, too. What, what does he maybe bring? What, what, what's your, I guess, communication? And where are, you, where are you guys as far as being on the same page? Yeah, Kyle's done a great job. We know whenever he's been healthy for us. Um, obviously, he has the, uh, the agility and, and quickness on the inside. Great feel for, for getting himself open uh, underneath. And, um, you know, just been dealing with some injuries, unfortunately. So, um, you know, look to work him back in, see how things progress this week. But talk to him. He said he feels good, and uh, we'll see where things go. Brian, we're seeing you push the ball down the field a lot more. It's not just on play action. What is it? Is it just opportunities? Is it just like an intent to get vertical? What's what's with that? Yeah, I mean, you, when you get matchups down the field and, and looks you like, you want to be able to, to take a shot. So, uh, it's a credit to our, our guys 
outside of, of winning those matchups and uh, and given opportunities to, to put the ball down the field. And then, um, you know, a lot of them, you know, take a little bit longer to get off. So um, giving the offensive line credit for, for giving me time to get it off. Looks that you like though. Is that stuff that you've been seeing during the week or like in live action as, as the game's being played out? Uh, it's a little bit of both. You know, sometimes, you know, you have a, a, a concept or a call you think you're going to push the ball down the field. And then sometimes just kind of the way it works out in the game that, hey, you know, this wasn't really the, the primary progression or primary read in the, in the throw uh, in the play. But, you know, you have a matchup you like and, and a look you like. So you give, a, give it a shot down the field. The Colts have a rookie quarterback, obviously first round pick, immediate starter in Richardson. You lived that life once upon a time. What was the, what was the yeah, biggest? Once upon a time. That's, yeah. <laughs> it's been a while. We all feel well, that. Yeah. Well, what was the biggest challenge you went through in being a rookie starter in this league? It's been a long time. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's, you're learning a lot. You know, I think uh, every situation is different, but you know, you're, you're learning the speed of the game, you're learning offense, teammates, you know, how things are done, uh, all those things. So uh, it's definitely a lot of information, a lot of new, but uh, obviously he's extremely talented and he made a bunch of big plays already. On Kyle Ryan, are there any particular situations where you think that he could really help this offense? Yeah, I mean, Kyle does a great job, like I said, of, of uh, getting himself open underneath. Um, he has that quickness and agility and a great feel for, for uh, some open space and, and just that spatial awareness. So, um, you know, we'll see where he's at. But if he is able to go, I definitely think he'll help us. What kind of like that chemistry with a guy like that? Is it just reps, or is there something you guys have to do behind the scenes to kind of get back into the swing of things? I think it's both. You know, I think uh, – Communicating, you know, right? You may not, you're not going to see every look in practice, but able to talk through the different looks uh, on tape, uh, and then take advantage of the few reps that you do get in practice. Why do you think you guys have been able to have such great success in the division in the last couple? Of years? Uh, I mean, they're, they're they're big games, right? And obviously, games you want to win them all, um, but the division games, you know, have a little bit more in them, and uh, obviously. Good team, right? You look at Indianapolis, they've been good over the past uh, several years. They played us tough just about every time we've played them. Uh, so we know we're going to have to be on top of our game and, and play for four quarters. What is Josh Wiley like as he's kind of tried to find his footing here as a rookie? And then how much you think maybe a game like Sunday could help give him some confidence to, to for continued success? Yeah, I'd love to see Josh build on, on Sunday. You know, made some plays for us. Um, you know, seeing him come along in practice as the, as the weeks have gone on, as he's gotten healthy. And, uh, you know, it's great to see him have success in the game and made some huge plays. So uh, he's a talented guy. He's long. He's athletic. Um, if we can get him the ball, it's going to be a good thing for us. You think that tight end blocking took a, took a big step on Sunday and, and showed where it could maybe get? Yeah, I think our blocking as a whole, you know, took a step forward. You know, you look at what the tight ends did, what the offensive line did. You had receivers finishing down the field. Uh, it was more uh, of the the way we want to play as far as physical finish. Um, you know, just being being a team that's going to play until the whistle and, and finishing those blocks down the field, trying to keep the ball carrier clean all the way down the field. You know, you look at this team; they were playing a team that's going to try to hunt the ball. You see them punching at the ball, raking at the ball. You know, so it's going to be crucial that we can keep our guys off of the ball carrier and um, and finish those blocks. There's some that say you're probably one of the best at play action fakes. Where was this kind of developed? Is there any point in your career where you're like, okay, I can do this pretty well? You just work at it. I don't know. You don't really. I don't think about it like that. You know, I just uh, work at at doing whatever I can to to improve. You know, and um, obviously. You know, when we were running the ball and finishing the runs and things like that, then uh, if you're able to execute those play action fakes well, uh, you get the backers to step up and open up some things downfield. Right, it's not uncommon that you guys have played better at home for two games than you have on those two games on the road. But what do you take into what you've learned about what's going on with you guys on those two road losses into this weekend? Yeah, we have to just play better than we have on the road. You know, we haven't executed well. We've put ourselves in, in uh, tough situations. You know, first game was turn turnovers and long yardage uh, in Cleveland was long yardage situations and third long throughout the game. Um, you know, if we can get our, keep ourselves in third and manageable, we feel pretty good about converting. So being efficient on the first, second down, uh, being able to uh, sustain drives uh, throughout the game, I think is going to be crucial. DeAndre Hopkins really has become a guy that you've been looking for a lot, it seems, on third down. How helpful is it to have somebody like that and the connection you both have built pretty quickly? Yeah, he's made some huge plays. You know, I don't think it's not like stat blowing numbers, but huge plays within the game. Um, you know, I think the first one was a, a big play down the field on third down, kind of sparked us right as we went down and scored, finished that drive. Some other crucial third down conversions that he got for us. So um, just that, that matchup ability for him to, to win his one-on-one -on -one matchup and, and find some space on crucial downs and, and sustained drives, 
has been huge for us so far, and hopefully we can keep building on it. Yeah, Ian, how about uh, the fact that he was able to get down the field for a couple of throws? There was the one on the flea flicker that was, you know, barely incomplete, and then there was that one that you referenced that he made the big catch. How, how important to get him involved down the field as well as on possession throws? Yeah, I mean, his guy can he can make plays all over. You know, you look at you know plays down the field or or underneath. You know, I think we've kind of hit him hit him all over the field, whether it be a you know short slant route or a fade ball. Uh, you mentioned the the big post over the top, uh, some crossing routes we've hit him on. You know, so uh, he's a complete receiver, and we're able to uh, you know try to give him the ball wherever. You had some really big numbers on the look good if you guys executed. But as far as Tim Kelly is concerned with the play calling that he's doing, how is he setting you guys up for success? He's doing a good job. I think he's uh, done a great job of, of getting a feel throughout the game of, of when to call things. Um, you know, hit on some some perfect timing. You know, of, of hitting those calls, and that's what you want is uh, a caller to not only put in a good plan, but being able to have a feel for for when to dial things up. And he's done a great job of that so far. I uh, can't say enough about the job he's done. I want your conversations with him during the course of the week when you guys are watching film or meeting or whatever. Are, are there certain times or certain plays might jump out to you that you might say to him, hey, "I'd love to run this." Yeah, of course. I mean, we, we work on the plan together. You know, we'll, we'll look at the initial things, um, you know, put things in, and then kind of talk through them. Hey, I like it on this. And as the week goes on, you know, we'll have a meeting on Friday and kind of go through the whole plan and say, hey, you know, I like I like this shot and this situation. You know, he has his ideas, I have my ideas, and we kind of put those together and come away with with a great feeling of, of when things are going to get called. And it gives me a lot of confidence going into the game knowing that we're on the same page. Numbers last week against the Blitz. What kind of things did you guys do to them? Like, what do you feel like was behind that for you? Nearly perfect numbers last week. Uh, guys were getting open and uh, had some time to get the ball away. You know, you put those two things together, and it's a good position to be in for the quarterback. Ryan, with the division gridlocked like it is, how are you guys discussing this opportunity at Indy? And even though it's early, the ability to control your own destiny. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's super early in the season, but uh, obviously a division game on the road. Uh, a game we really want to go win. Uh, we know we're going to be in for a, a tough battle against a good team, um, but obviously the division games mean a little more, and just where the division's at, got to take advantage of every opportunity you get. From a consistency standpoint, you know, you guys lost one, won one, lost one, won one. What will it take for you to be able to stack a couple wins together? Um, the kind of the things I talked about already, you know, just going out, uh, being efficient, making some crucial plays in crucial situations, you know, whether it be on third down, in the red zone. Um, you know, two minute, four minute, whatever the case may be. You know, being able to to play efficiently uh, throughout the game, uh, make some big plays in crucial crucial situations, and obviously come away with the win. And as far as momentum is concerned, are, are you one to where you could carry the momentum from last week into this week, or do you build it up throughout the game? What's your approach? I think you got to be able to uh, you know build on the things you did well, right? You know, you, you understand the things we get that we did well. Um, Make that be consistently what we do, uh, but then also what you did last week doesn't matter, you know. So you know you are trying to build on what you did last week and keep it rolling. But if you just rest on that, then it's not going to happen. So we got to come attack each and every week with a purpose and um, intently try to go make it happen. Ryan, what do you see from Nick and uh, what was your trust level with him? Which one? Westbrook and Keenan. Um, yeah, Nick's made some uh, some big plays for us. You know, obviously he's been so consistent over his his three years here. I guess going on four now um, with us, you know, just consistent day in and day out. We can move him all over. He does does the dirty work for us. He can make plays down the field. Um, you know, you see him finish a tough run on the touchdown a collision right at the, uh, at the goal line. So uh, it's a guy I trust and, and we trust as an offense because he does so much for us. Can the shadows there be a factor? Is that something you're conscious of during warm-ups? If, it, if it's open or closed or whatever, where the shadows are big on the uh, I don't think about it a whole lot. Just go play and, and deal with whatever the circumstances are. That's good. Thank, Thank you. you.